Former President Jerry John Rawlings has told journalists Ghana needs selfless and bold leaders willing to do the necessary cleanup to enable the country get out of what he calls almost dead economic situation. It's not totally dead, but it almost is. However, if we, if we can have some very bold and selfless men and women ready to do the necessary cleanup, we can get out of it. The former president was speaking at the sidelines of the National Economic Forum underway in Sinchi in the eastern region. Meanwhile, the president, John Dramani Mahama, who opened the forum, said the country's economy wasn't that bad, except people need to stop being cynical. One of the most dangerous conditions that we as a nation can allow to exist is cynicism. We need to speak in order to be heard. We cannot remain silent on issues that affect our nation. We need to talk with one another rather than at each other. And we need to listen to be thoughtful in our consideration. We will, of course, have divergent views. And even if we agree on ideas, we may differ in our opinions on how to implement them. But what we do share, what we will always have as our common ground, is our intention. We all want to see Ghana succeed. And to that end, we all want to find a solution that is practical, a solution that is sustainable. It is in the spirit of inclusiveness that we have invited you here today and that you have also graciously accepted. Well, so the question is, is the economy really that good? And if there have been previous fora to deliberate on the best way to move the, the economy forward, why are we in Senchi? My name is Steve Renti, and this is today's Big Story. Former President Rawlins, in his usual frank manner, set the tone for today's deliberations by saying, things are hard, but we can get out if we have bold and selfless leaders. If we cannot see or recognize what I would call the ultimate objective, then to be quite honest, I don't know what we're about in this country. I mean, we cannot escape it with ease. And getting away f from it is going to be pretty difficult unless we're ready for a very serious cleanup that would require bold and selfless men and women. We've done it before, and it can be done again. We, we find ourselves in some pretty tight situations. But somehow, we just don't seem able to see when it started. I've always said it, but the propaganda machinery, you know, keeps trying to disrupt it. But now we can hear it for ourselves. It's not totally dead, but it almost is. However, if we, if we can have some very bold and selfless men and women ready to do the necessary cleanup, we can get out of it. I said it's been done before, and it can happen again. We can do it again. What do you okay? But while the president, John Dramani Mahama, still insists the worst thing Ghanaians can do is to continue to be cynical. Let's get onto the telephone lines now to Dr. Theophilus Richardson, who is an economic policy analyst. He's also a lecturer at the University of Education, Winneba. Good evening, sir, and thanks for joining us on today's big story. Good evening, and thanks for having me. 
Now, now, two things here. The president thinks that we're being too cynical, really. And if we continue remaining cynical, nothing will work. And the former president also says that we need bold and selfless leaders to help us in what he calls cleanup. Do we need a cleanup in Ghana? <laughs> um, I don't know how to start this conversation. But just unfortunately that um, the president should, you know, um, choose such um, like adjectives to describe Ghanaians mm. that Ghanaians are being cynical. If you want to dialogue with people to be able to reach the consensus, you know, on key issues, problems confronting the country, then of course we must use language that will encourage people to engage with us. Mm. You know, because what we do need is an atmosphere of trust and cordiality to be able to converse with each other, you know, openly, frankly, uh, so that you come up with solutions that really work for all of us. Mm. Um, following on what Jerry Rollins said, former President Jerry Rollins said, um, yeah, we need a cleanup. Well, I think uh, these are residues of is uh, you know the the, the password that the June for clean up and all that yes and it seems that it, what you're trying to say is somewhat true that situation has generated so much so that we need a kind of revolution in the country and I've had a number of people you know express a certain similar sentiment that we need stop the kind of June for revolution to clean up mm -hmm. the system why because what things have seemed to have happened since June 4, including the way you made scandal the what that all the judgment that scandals, including those which the Supreme Court or High Court have ruled for uh, those monies to be re uh, to be taken by, collected or paid by, by those con companies, Jim do it. And if you look at how the judicial system has, you know, ground on, and the, the propaganda that President Rollins refers to, yes, he himself may have used some propaganda or some other mm. uh, devices and stratagems to deal with the opposition during the early years of the revolution, and even in the early days of the transition to political, uh, what a democratic dispensation, mm. some, some propaganda may have been used, but I think it's, it's, been, it's been abused or overused, yeah. and, and that does not encourage individuals to come out, you know, to uh, give a, a fair job opinion or views and and over and, and, and rather problem. and rather unfortunately i mean the current democratic space does not allow for these kinds of revolutions really i mean we we, we go through an electoral system where people who disagree with your governance style will choose to vote you out of governance or bring you back in but let's let's let me shift the attention a little no, bit may, to, may mm. i make this point yes yes Before, mm. well you go for a cleanup He's not calling. Um, he's not. I don't think he's calling for the June 4th type of revolution. Yeah. You know, implemented by a de facto, a brutal, uh, some call it terrorist military regime mm. at the time. In, 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 in a democratic position as well, we can clean up the system. You mm. know, as we, what we call cleaning up the audience tables, where the system is. Um, I mean, choked with corruption. You yes. know, uh, naked corruption. They like corruption, and all institutions seem to be incapable of dealing with the problem. Mm. I think there's a kind of thing cleanup he was he was talking oh, yeah. about right so yeah. let's let's let me discuss Hello. slightly a little bit uh, the the Hello. president's statement today the president among the things that he raised I don't have the statement right in front of me now but I do recall that he made reference to the fact that Ghana's economy in 2013 grew by up to about 7.1 percent which was more uh, than the average global average the African average and development uh, you know, developing country average. Do you think that by these indications, we should be sitting back and relaxing, thinking indeed that our country is not doing too bad? Well, what we do know, and all developing economies, most economies, uh, developing economies do know, is that in spite of GDP growth rate, mm. you know, um, in the 1950s and 1960s, and even up to now, mm. you know, many developing countries have been placed you know, um, by widespread poverty, you know, inequality, unemployment, the problems that we are facing today. 
you know, in spite of GDP growth rate, many developing countries have been bedeviled, you know, uh, with, um, what was that, the depletion of their natural resources, mm. okay, on which they depend for their uh, global trade and, uh, and, and, and earnings, or what I may call it, uh, well, income. So the economy has grown by 7.1%. That is still less than the highest growth rate uh, achieved in 2007, thereabouts. In real terms, the question is in real terms, what does it mean for us? Mm. You know, mm. and we must not, even if it is laudable, you know, laudable as it is, we must not, you know, rest on, on mm. our own. Why? Mm. Because the president has, some, some time, was it last year or thereabouts, declared that the country was, uh, admitted that the country uh, has been since then facing a, a liquidity crisis. And we don't know how um, that, how badly that uh, liquidity crisis has degenerated into a solvency crisis. That they're suggesting for the uh, government to dip its hands into the heritage funds and even into our reserves. That suggests that the economy may be teetering mm. on the brink of a balance of payment crisis, which has to do with a capitalization crisis. That the, if the country has gone to the IMF for a kind of uh, arrangement or the bailout or whatever arrangement, also does suggest that in addition to the fiscal crisis, there is uh, either an imminent or we are facing uh, what's that, a balance of payment crisis. Given the, 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 the scenario, which is not a short term, I would not say, it seems to be a long term thing. We go back to 1960, uh, 1971, you know, when the economy suffered a massive, uh, uh, what's that, uh, uh, fall in cocoa prices, you know, and that for the Israel government to go to the IMF. That argument also uh, comes up. So it's, it's a long-term, you know, kind of structural problem. I would say that we must not rest on our house. We are facing a problem, a big, big problem, a crisis, a domestic crisis, which may have degenerated into an external one, a complete economic crisis. If that is so, we must admit it and find a way of solving it. GDP growth may be a good thing but in real terms, it may not amount to much to Ghanaians. What mm. matters is the cost of living facing Ghanaians, the standard of living, you know, the unemployment rate, the, uh, the, the levels of poverty, and in real terms, what is the real GDP right. growth rate, you know. But um, there are other issues. That the, uh, the whole dialogue was, um, has been made in controversy, you know, both on the NP, uh, right. NPP against mm. the government, um, if you look at MPP, the Dr. Position, Dr. Dr. Rich, Dr. Richardson, I, I will have you hold briefly. I've got John Gachi uh, on the telephone. He is actually at Sinchi and is joining us on telephone right now. Good evening, sir, and thanks for your time on today's big story. Uh, good evening. It's great to have you. Now, you are there. You are there uh, at, at uh, Sinchi right now and took part in the deliberations. Can you give us a brief idea how day one uh, went? I brief a bit about what? Mm. Hello? Yes, I'm listening, sir. It's a brief idea about... I'm asking you how today, generally, Hello. the Hello. deliberations today, how it went. Uh, well, I think uh, uh, the whole program was uh, uh, opened by the president. Mm. Uh, he gave his comment about uh, the spirit within which... Hello, hello, sir. I'm, I'm still listening, sir. Well, uh, we have lost John Gachi on the line, and uh, we'll try to raise him back. I reckon that uh, connectivity to Senchi in the eastern region has been poor. We're also trying to reach uh, on telephone our reporters there. So we still have Dr. Richardson, who is fortunately for us not in Senchi. So, Dr. Richardson, you were raising key issues about the state of the economy and how we shouldn't be resting on our hours. But I need to find out from you that uh, holding economic fora of this nature, the president himself stated that a lot has, has taken place. Some took place under the NDC 1, NDC 2, and then under the PNDC, uh, under the MPP, I beg your pardon. These do not appear to have given us any tangible outcomes which we can work by. Do we need more for of this nature in addressing our problems? Mm. Um, yes and no, depending on how it is, the forum mm. is conducted. Mm. You know, I mean, Ghana is still a young country. 
and there's diversity of opinion. Mm. We do have some experts. So when the country, from time to time, not only when we are confronted, you know, um, by a, a big crisis, a huge crisis, you no, know, but from time to time, it, 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 it's necessary that mm. we gather in, uh, people with some knowledge or capabilities in certain areas you know, to dialogue. So, so I mean, I mean, so uh, this forum is not exactly bad. I mean, just by the fact that if we had previous forums, uh, forums, it doesn't mean that this one is exactly bad, really. No, but it depends okay. on the context. Mm. I think the why this one has made the controversy is that some people think that the problems are just, uh, do I say, under our noses. You know, they're right. not perfect. The okay, Richard, everything is out there, and we, therefore people have also suggested that this, uh, was there some solutions or highlighted the problems. You know, giving magnitude of problems, of the problems, and therefore we don't need to assemble about 400 people, you know, just to, to do that. Dr. Richardson, what, I beg your pardon, I'll what? just have you hold briefly because I'm having technical challenges with John Gachi on the line from Sinchi. I may lose him if we, we, we don't finish with him quickly. So I'll go to him and quickly we'll, we'll return to you. So, John, I was asking you how Deliberation Day 1 went, considering the state of our economy, the problems we are facing, the president's uh, uh, optimism that the country is not doing exactly too bad, although he accepts that we are challenged. Did day one reflect all these optimism and expectations from participants? Well, uh, what I observe is exactly so, because I heard the TUC talk, I heard the AGI talk, I heard some prominent uh, Ghanaian economists mm. talk, I had uh, a, a delivery from African Development Bank and all came to the conclusion uh, that this is very important uh, uh, occasion right. and that the hope for Ghana in terms of the medium term is so bright that something should be done immediately uh, to put a framework forward to address the economic challenges in order right. uh, to actually experience the hope for the medium to long term. Uh, prosper for the country. Right. So, if you look at how it started day one, do you would you say that the boycott from the MPP, for example, took took the shine out of out of the the forum? Well, I I think I do not want to answer uh, the question you put it. Mm. Uh, the issue is that the MPP is a key player uh, in both political and economic fortunes of mm. the country. Their presence is very much important, uh, not necessarily uh, because they are political parties, but I can envisage that some of the things that consensus will be built are such that uh, uh, they will need further uh, deliberation and consensus building agreement mm. Mm. with among political parties. So if uh, the MPP is not part of it, I can foresee that some of the issues that uh, need implementation in the future uh, may be affected uh, negatively. Uh, so it is in that light that right. uh, uh, the MPP itself should reconsider the decision because even if they are not here, I believe there will be post uh, uh, forum consultation right. and deliberation. For example, if the forum were to come to agreement that uh, there should be a limit for fiscal uh, uh, issues. Uh, how, will, how if the MPP is not part? How will it collaborate with other parties in order to ensure that that is implemented mm. in the interest of the people of Ghana? So I do not think that we should be concentrating on uh, uh, the issue of whether it takes the shine or not. But it is important for the MPP uh, to reconsider the decision after the forum. Right. There is opportunity for engagement that is necessary for proper consensus building. Right. I, I do also know that uh, you were in a plenary session today, and uh, I'm not sure the media was not allowed in to cover. Can you give us roughly what exactly, what exercise you did at the plenary sessions and the contributions that came forward, how, how they worked out generally for, for, for today's session? Well, I think the media was not there because uh, the intention is that uh, a consensus should be built and that consensus mm. should be published to the media. Right. I, so uh, I, I do not think that uh, I am in a position to tell you all that was said, but except right. to tell you the mm. spirit 
uh, in which the discussions were made. Right. Uh, you will see that everybody is spelling out the good prospects for the country in the future, and everybody is indicating that this is an ample opportunity that, that the government has created in order to put ideas together, mm. in order to uh, deal with the issues confronting uh, the, the, the nation. Right. So it means that generally, if I ask you whether you see the, this enthusiasm from the participants as good overall, I mean, th I'm asking this question on the back of suggestions that perhaps this, this exercise really is just window dressing and that many of the issues that are to be discussed or raised have been decided upon by government already. Did you see from the, 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 the body language or posturing of the participants that indeed this is good and relevant moving forward? Uh, I, I did not see that. What I saw rather that there are new ideas that people are bringing on board mm. uh, 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 which uh, were not thought of before. Those right. are not the clear issues that were being put on the table. Uh, people are looking at the issues from different dimensions. Uh, so, so, so that is what is the spirit uh, here. Uh, the spirit is not about we have known it already and we do not need a consensus. Mm. In fact, uh, the TUC was very happy. TUC is even claiming that the government has actually uh, heeded to their call for a national dialogue on the economy. Mm. Uh, so everybody uh, is, is happy about that. Uh, so I do not see uh, the issue of people thinking that we know it all and there is no need uh, for this engagement to take place. Right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, John Gachi. So quickly before I let you go, uh, what's, what's tomorrow going to look like? Uh, well, various uh, sessional groups will continue with their discussion. Mm. And after that, uh, uh, the various rapporteurs will come uh, to do a presentation as to what has been agreed upon uh, for the general house to uh, de deliberate and then a final uh, agreement on the issues will be tabled. Right. So, so I think that is what will be taking place uh, t tomorrow. Thank you very much, John Gachi. John is an economist, and we're grateful that you could make time to join us all the way from St. G. So, Dr. Richardson, let me come back to you. I mean, forum or no forum, enthusiasm or no enthusiasm, we have economic situation on our hand. We need to get on with it. We need to get the ideas and the policies that will shape this country in the next short term, short to medium term. Do you think we're going the right way? Uh, why not? It is good we had this forum. Um, that, despite the fact that some groups did not attend, or you know, mm. it's been split, you know, by controversy, there certainly will be other that was what I was going to continue yeah. from. Yeah, you know, where right. I was going to mm. continue mm. from that. There are some views which are yet on head mm. that may be, you know, um, put forward as a forum. You know, some sorts that have not been ever um, discussed, maybe this time it brought forth courageously, as uh, uh, was that Mr. Gatti has uh, said. indicated mm. that it did happen. So it is good that we're having this forum, you know, but the context matters. And, you know, the context has to do with the atmosphere in which the, ma the major, uh, was that, the stakeholders or actors in the postal economy of Ghana have engaged each other. You know, and, and, and despite all the predictions about the future process of the economy, you know, hello? Yes, I'm here, sir. I'm listening, sir. Yeah, it is not mm. new. We have been hearing these since about 1985, 86, that the prospects are due. But we have been moving from one crisis to another. So these are, yes, what they are saying is that the prospect, uh, medium term to long term prospects are due if and only if we do one, two, three, or four things. And uh, if I may go back to the main aim of the conference, you know, as uh, uh, intimated or indicated by uh, Minister Tepe, that it is meant to correct shape created by Ghana's mm. middle income status. Well, this, is, this is a bit, you know, puzzling. Why? Because well, if we should discuss this middle income status itself, it's, it's, it's a bit questionable. And we are wondering, it should be clear to us what has been, what uh, shape you know, or uh, how do you call it? Uh, do I say cleavages or whatever? Uh, 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 rifts, you know, uh, have, been, have been created by this government.
Ghana's middle income. He was not specific about that. So that we will know that Ghana's middle income status indeed is real. These are the shifts that have been created. And, you know, what is the nature of the shift and how we can resolve them. Mm. These have not been made specific and therefore it is not uh, 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 helpful. We must, as much as we can, you know, try to please tidy up the system and stop the propaganda. I agree very much with uh, President Rollins mm. that propaganda is too much. Yeah. I don't know who were invited to this conference and how they were invited and all those kind of things, given the concerns expressed by uh, the, the, the MPP. Indom also indicated that if he were invited, he would go. You know, so um, it, it is these controversies that are, are indeed somewhat uh, disturb uh, the, the, the glamour or taking a bit out of it. But on the whole, mm. we would say that it has taken the shine of it. The long-term okay. implications, of course, for the country. Even if the policies have been agreed upon already with the IMF, what the conference can do is that they can provide the opportunity to the government to, you know, either reform or modify the, mm. this package, since it's a home home policy, send them back to the IMF for renegotiation. Right. These, these are all opportunities that the conference provides. Right. And I think it, 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 it's a step in the right direction. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Richardson is uh, an economist and a senior lecturer at the University of Education. Whatever. My name is Stephen Enti. That's where we draw the curtains for today's big story. We'll be right back with the interactive segment. Stay with us.